In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the post-processing stage, which is after we stack the image all in Photoshop. And Photoshop is a tool that just about everybody has, or at least has access to. And I've got a neat little trick for you, and this is something that you won't see anybody else doing, and that is how to do this as entirely in 32-bit as possible. So we're going to do the majority of our editing in 32-bit before we downsample the 16-bit, which allows us to preserve a lot more information in our picture and it'll give you a much much better image it'll allow you to stretch your images a lot further so it kind of shortens the amount of time you'll have to spend out every single night uh, taking the actual image now every single image is made up of three channels rgb it's kind of how i remember it red green blue and i'm using narrowband data which is taken with model camera we stacked all three of the channels separately and then we're going to take the red color channel, we're going to replace that with the sulfur filter. And then the green color channel, we're going to replace with the hydrogen filter or the hydrogen channel picture that we took. And then the blue channel we replace, of course, with the oxygen layer. And that allows us to create what's called the Hubble palette, which is SHO. So to begin, we're just going to open up all three of the different images that we stacked separately in Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, so let's go to the elephant trump and here's the three tiff files that we stacked open all three of them up and as you can see each one of them is black and white and that's just because they consist of one channel um, and we have a, a sulfur layer a hydrogen image and an oxygen image we go to the channels just one just one channel um, go back up here to the oxygen yep once again just one channel now let's go to the sulfur channel and we're going to actually hit command A and then command C. Okay. And then we're going to hit command N and Photoshop is actually going to remember the size of the image that we just copied. And so we're going to select that size and we're going to make sure we make sure you choose RGB color because that will give us three channels in the new document that we create and also make sure you have 32 bit. <clears throat> so. Here we have a blank image, you know, you can see there's nothing there, and we've copied this section, the sulfur, and we're going to go to the red, which we're going to replace with sulfur, and we're just command V to paste, pretty easy. And then we're going to go to hydrogen, command A, command C, go back to our new document, green channel, now command V to paste, go back to the oxygen channel, hit command A, command C, go back to our new document, now click on the blue channel, and hit command V, and Voila, we're done. We have a color image. It's really that easy um, to combine all of your images in. And, and this, of course, is using Deep Sky Stacker's ability to align all of the images together. And you can see we've got some little bit of stacking artifacts. And so let's start out with a little bit of a stretch here. So we're going to do an adjustments layer stretch. And these are backwards adjustable, so you know we, they're not destructive. And these can be done entirely in 32-bit. We're, we're working in 32-bit right now at this minute. So we'll start out with a three-point stretch. Um, although be gentle, and you want to do each stretch gently. You don't want to do one really big stretch. So go back up here to adjustments layers again. We're going to add a levels adjustments layer now. And as you can see, there's some black areas that are causing some issues in the adjustments layer. So we're going to crop the image right now, All right, which will get rid of these. Uh, slight misalignments from the different images that we stack together. So as you can see that fixed up the levels palette and we're going to go through but channel by channel and we're just going to adjust the left side and we're going to bring that in a little bit that what that does is that preserves the contrast so you can kind of see what we're doing as we go along with this and it also keeps the color balance of the image balanced as we stretch it. All right and then there's one more thing that I like to do and I do this between every single stretch I like to increase the saturation just a little bit because as we stretch an image we will actually decrease the saturation and doing a little bit of extra saturation boost will of course boost that keep that preserve basically so we're doing another curve stretch here 3.1 this one's a little bit more of a gentle curve as you can see I'm gonna go back do another uh, levels adjustment <clears throat> once again each and every single channel and doing this each channel will I think let you get It'll let you stretch your images further, let's put it that way. Uh, it's, a, it's a better way of doing it. It's a more precise way of doing it. 
Uh, I never bring in from the right side because you can see there's stuff that will start to appear there that you could clip out and you wouldn't see otherwise. So here we are doing another hue saturation, usually under five. You know, I typically do two or three. The five here is a little bit extreme. So doing another curve stretch. And the reason we do so many small incremental stretches is because if we don't do it in small increments, we can accidentally delete information and that will increase combing. Well, that'll bring out combing earlier in our um, levels histogram here. So this looks pretty good. Let's keep moving along here. Black point looks okay. And now we're going to do one more, I don't know, one more saturation increase. Increase the saturation. I'm doing it less so much now. Go back to another adjustment stretch. As you can see, the the information is starting to get wider, which is what we want. And we're starting to see lots of detail pop out here. And the levels is starting to look really good too. Go back to the green. Just bring that in a little bit. And bring the blue. Bring that in just a little bit more on the left side. Only only adjusting on the left side. Very rarely do I bring it in from the right. One more saturation punch here, just three points. So now we're going to start preparing to do a hybrid 16-bit and 32-bit. Hitting Shift Option Command E, it creates a new image or layer, I should say, on top of all of these adjustment layers. Now we're going to duplicate the image, and this time I rename it 16-bit. We can differentiate between the two, and we are actually going to take this version of the image, and we are going to downsample it to 16-bit. And that's to open up a few other features that will then kind of copy and cheat into the 32-bit. Uh, you can merge. I, I hit just uh, don't merge here, but this will merging will actually keep your file smaller, so you probably should merge. Next, we're going to go up here to the 32-bit image, and as you can see, we've got these stars here, but we can't do a lot of selections with the stars in 32-bit. So here in 16-bit, we can actually select these stars. We can do the highlight color range selection. This is something you can't do in 32-bit. And then we're going to refine this a little bit. I'm going to modify feather it a little bit. I usually, I usually do like a three pixel feather, then go back to a two pixel feather, then do a one pixel feather. Uh, and you can also expand the selection a little bit. I probably should, expand, should have expanded it here, but I didn't. So now we're going to hit Command J which is going to create a new layer with all the pixels that were selected in a new layer, okay? And we can hit Command A, okay, and then Command C. We can go back now to our 32-bit image. You know, as you can see, it's, it's got the selection if we Command click on this layer. Now let's go back to the 32-bit file, and we're just going to paste that layer in there, which has all the pixel distribution of the 16-bit, okay? And we're going to command click on it, and what do you, voila, we have the selection that we made in the 16-bit image here in the 32-bit image. And now we can do a star minimization as if we were working on a 16-bit file, even though we're still working in 32-bit. And the great thing about this is that, you know, we just have a lot more information to work with because, you know, we're, we're still working in 32-bit. So filter, minimum, uh, usually one or two pixels is enough. I'm going to do, we'll do one pixel here. Come on, do one pixel. Okay, it's going to be stubborn. We're going to do two. Uh, three will just about completely eliminate the stars. As you can see there. There's still a little bit there, but then we're going to, we're going to do a few other things and those stars will kind of pop back out again. So there's before, there's after. You can just about completely eliminate stars with this technique. And then we don't need this layer anymore, so we can delete that. Or you can keep it in there if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Just turn off the image, basically. So we're going to go back to the 16-bit. I actually copy and pasted my finished 32-bit file into the 16-bit file. Because now here's a few things that we got to do, which this is not available in 32-bit, and that's the channel mixer. And this is where we start to kind of like play with the colors. I like to decrease the cayenne and the greens channel 
and decrease the magenta by 25. Uh, this is where we start to create that Hubble palette. Cayennes. Uh, well, once again, we actually go to the yellows. We reduce the cayennes all the way. And then the magenta. This time I increase this by 25. And I'm going to go to the cayenne channel itself. And then we decrease the yellows all the way. And we can do another channel mixer on top of it if we don't think that 100% is enough. So, you know, so this will essentially give us a 200% minus of the yellows. And it really starts to pop out some of the, the color around the outside edges. And, and it starts to give you that, that definition that you're looking for. And of course you can play with a lot of different things here to, to get different, to bring out different types of characteristics. Uh, because we're working with SHO palette, you know, it's a, it's a more scientific palette. And so you can actually kind of see uh, where parts of the sky are warm, where parts of the sky are cool, where they're expanding, where they're contracting, neat things like that. that you know, this is why NASA uses this Hubble palette is to do this kind of scientific work. So here we are at the levels and what I did there is I basically set my black point and that's to basically find a black point. You know, this is going to eliminate the last bits of light pollution. Uh, there's always a little bit of light pollution that leaks through, not much. And as you can see in the histogram, we see this combing starting to appear. That means we need more data added to our image. You know, we take more exposure time. Uh, it also kind of means that we're done stretching, we're done image editing, if you even more posturization in your image. Uh, I like to increase the brightness just a little bit. This is a brightness adjustments layer, which is again, non-destructive. And that's pretty much it. Hey, thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe.